Hi, my name is Rachel. Um, I am doing a mm, fiction Christian book review today. Uh, this is my dog Panda. She is the laziest dog ever and she snores really loud. So, um, so the book I'm doing today is Redeeming Law by Francine Rivers. I know so many people have done this book review, um, but I went into Duane. So, um, I first heard this book probably, like, was, like, interested in reading it in, like, December this year, and I was looking to buy it, and I went online to go find where to get it cheap at, and... Then it said, like, oh, the movie is playing this, the movie is playing this week in the theater. And I was like, I didn't even know there was a movie coming out. Apparently, that's probably why so many people were, um, you know, doing book reviews and reading it recently, probably, because there was the movie coming out. But I had no clue. So I was like, all right, so I'm going to go see this movie this weekend. So I brought a friend and we went inside. And I, I loved it. I thought the movie was beautiful. I thought uh, the storyline was beautiful. Um, the just I love the movie. Okay, I did not like um, some scenes in it. I thought it was really inappropriate, especially since they classify it as a Christian movie. I think that's really sad that they did that. Um, there was a scene where she had, I think, no shirt on and her hair was, like, uh, coming down past her chest. So, it was covering herself up, but very immodest, uh, very immodest scene there. And then there was two scenes where they were actually having sex and it wasn't like they were, um, like, you knew they were going to have sex and then they, you know faded out of the scene or something like that like no they were they were in it and so I really wish that they wouldn't have put those scenes in there especially it being a Christian movie I don't know what they were thinking it couldn't have been a Christian director that's for sure whoever uh created this movie it was just really sad that they're classifying that as a Christian movie but if I just look at it as a movie I watch uh, movies all the time that have things in it that I don't agree with or don't like or wish they wouldn't have those kind of things So I try to take like the good things out of a movie fast forward through the bad things and um, Take out the good leave the bad that type of, of mindset um, Because there's so many things out there in the world that have a little bit of good to have have mostly good to them and then a little bit bad and so yeah, I just feel like that's a good way to come at things as a Christian. Um, you don't need to throw everything out and just stick to watching, I don't know, like, um, you don't need to uh, throw everything out and just stick with, like, leave it to be for the rest of your life. Like, there's, we live in the world, the world is sinful, and so to, like, try to shield yourself from every single thing is virtually impossible where we live so anyways I just feel like I really am saddened that they classified that as a Christian movie um they should not have done that that was wrong but I will say the movie overall was a very well done beautiful movie um the book, same thing. I So I watched the movie, then right after the movie, I went to the bookstore and I got the book. And because so I was like, I love this movie so much. I, I really need to go get the book. So um, I, I read it a couple weeks later and I really like the book. I like, um, I like how beautiful the story is. I love how messy Angel is and how uh, I, I like as a, as a Christian I think that we sometimes like live in such a perfect like heavenly bubble that we don't always see like how dirty and bad sin is and so because we don't live in that we don't live in that world we live in like almost a, like a heaven here on earth and so 
we don't see how bad sin can be. Like, we know it's bad, but we don't, we don't live in there, so we don't w witness it. But, like, if you read a book like this, try not to wake up my dog. If you read a book like this, and you get to, like, experience how dirty sin is through that book, um, it helps me want to reach out to non-believers that much more and care for them and have more of a concern for them and not just, oh, they're just living their life. They're just doing what they do. Like, no, they need so much help. And the only way that they're going to get any kind of um, peace on this earth and peace after death is by knowing Jesus. And so, yeah, I just really enjoyed, like, because it really talked to me about, like, I live in this, like, my home life, my family life is beautiful and wonderful, and we don't have to deal with the messy... Oh, my book, dog! <laughs> okay, so I listened to this one girl give um, a talk about this book that she wrote, and she was non-Christian, and it was just really interesting hearing what a non-Christian had to say about this book. Like, she didn't, she didn't like it. She didn't understand it at all. Like, she didn't understand, like, the God themes throughout this book. And I thought that was so interesting because, to me, like, those spoke to me so much. So, like, uh, for example, like, why did Michael keep on changing her name throughout the book? Like, at the beginning of the book, her name was Sarah. That was her birth name. And then when she was sold into the prostitution, they renamed her as Angel, which is, like, a stripper name um and then they when michael married her he started calling her uh mara and to me that was like a representation that he knew her um uh, maybe not all of her because mara and sarah rhyme besides the first letter um the m and the s um like he knew her or really wanted to know who she herself was um and maybe didn't know all of her like all the things that had happened to her but he was looking at who she was and not like the outside of her so i just thought that was a beautiful um i don't know if she meant to do that but that was kind of my uh, thinking uh behind that so um and then uh michael kept on like calling her different names sometimes during the um book like he would be like come on tarza like what are you doing or whatever <laughs> and i think that those in those instances like um i don't know this for sure so don't like uh, quote me but i think those are names in the bible that um were examples of women like either they had a bad attitude or they were in a bad mood or whatever and um I think he called did he call her one time like Naomi or something like that and Naomi is like Ruth's mother-in-law who was um bitter basically so th that's the idea that he was trying to um give her different names for the different like moods that she was in kind of like little nicknames or whatever um, and then she, he called her at the end. He was like, I'm going to call you, uh, Tiza, Terza, Terza is what he was going to call her. And to me, that was like a representation that, this is my cat, Smokey, um, a representation that she was starting a new life. Um, you know, God would do that to people, his followers throughout the Bible where like Abram, he gave him a new name, Abraham, and uh, Saul, he gave him a new name, Paul, that their life is so dramatically changed that they're a new person that they need a new name to go along with this new life and new person that they are. Um, so yeah, that made perfect sense to me, but apparently to a non-Christian uh, reader, it would not make any kind of sense at all. Um, also, this booktuber uh, had mentioned that, uh, so when Angel um, slept with her brother-in-law, that that was, he had 
raped her. And Michael was horrible for making Angel be around her rapist because, um, like, how can you do that? You can't, once, how can you be around your attacker after, you know, that happened? Um, and, and Michael was an abuser for making that happen. But first of all, like, she was involved in the sexual act as much as he was. Maybe even more. Um, so he w definitely wasn't a rapist. Um, but it's just interesting to me that a non-believer would automatically think of someone as a rapist if you regret having sex with that person after having sex with that person. It's just interesting because I feel like they do that all the time in our um, world today. So, um, But as a Christian, I like this book. I think it's a good book. I don't think you should give it to young um, girls, teenage girls. I think it's completely appropriate for young for young adults, 20 something. I do not, I, if I, if I was, saw uh, if I had a younger, like my sister, she's 19. If I gave her this book, I would not say to her like, oh, you should look for your husband and he should be like Michael Hosea. No, no husband is ever like Michael Hosea. He's a representation of, of God and what God is like. He will continue to love us. He will continue to take us back. He will continue to, um, to seek after us and love us no matter what we've been through. My husband is not, is not that godly. And so to say, oh, you need a perfect husband that no matter what you do, he'll always chase after you. Like that's just looking for, um, you know, like Prince Charming, you can't find a husband like that. So, and I know a lot of Christian women had issues with um, saying that Michael Hosanna was basically perfect. And some circles would say, like, oh, you should look for a husband just like this. And no, not even close. Like, it's a fantasy husband. It, it's not real. So, um, but I love the story of Hosea in the Bible, and I think that this story does it such, such does a such such a good job, <laughs> does such a good job at just telling a more um, like not modern because it's not modern. It's from like you know the whatever, the Western times, the cowboy times, um, when they, when the gold rush time. So it's not necessarily modern, but it's modern compared to, um, Hosea's time in the Bible. So the story does a great story at bringing Hosea to like more modern time so that we can understand like what God does to forgive us, how hard it is for him to, or not how hard it is, how amazing it is that he can forgive us time after time after time, each time we turn our back on him, each time we do something against him, each time we uh, commit a sin, he continues to take us back. It's a beautiful picture of what God does for us, not, you know, like the perfect man I should go find. Um... So yeah, I definitely recommend this book. I would recommend it to an adult Christian woman. Um, and the movie, I would recommend it to an adult Christian woman. I would not recommend it if I knew that my friends did not appreciate those kind of movies. But okay, so uh, tomorrow I will be back on here giving another book review. I'm excited to do that and I can't wait to do it. Talk to you later. Bye.